Welcome back everybody for Teaching Through Repertoire. Today we're doing Wizards in Winter and we're going to break down the cello part. This is originally written by Paul O'Neill, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, uh, but this is arranged by Bob Phillips. It's for full orchestra and it is exactly the same length as the original. It's just been written out for the full complement of string and band and percussion instruments. So we're going to get started by looking at this first measure. Now with this piece of music you have to deal a lot with fast string crossing. So you're looking at your elbow and making sure the elbow is at a place where you can get from one spot to the other. If your elbow is too low, really tricky to comfortably get over to the D and the A string. So make sure your elbow is up and gives yourself room to maneuver. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and. So making sure we have space so that as you're doing these string crossings and double ups, you don't get stuck up against the cello. Looking ahead to measure Four, you have arco and pizzicato. Now, if we're in an orchestral setting, these switches from arco to pizzicato are typically too quick to do just on your own in time. So you have to be sort of fancy with your choices, with how you approach the instrument. In orchestra, you have the luxury of having people sharing a stand. So the outside person cannot play the downbeat of measure four with the bow and just be ready for the pizzicato. Also, they don't have to play the last note of measure four so they can get ready for the arco. The important thing is to attack both of those measures cleanly. So you might try and do it all, but if it sounds like this, it just slams into the instrument, that's no good. We don't want that clunky, aggressive sound. We want to make sure we hear the note as intended. So a nice way to work around that is outside players don't play the downbeat of measure four so you can get your hand ready for the pizzicato. And then also outside players don't play the last note of measure four so you can get ready for the arco. Inside players then you fill in, you make sure to play the downbeat and then jump into the pizzicato when you can. Play that last pizzicato because the outside players are covering the next downbeat. And that's how you break down an orchestral sort of management of a really challenging transition from arco to pizzicato and keep it sounding really clean. Just looking at the notes, you have a 1-1 one, one shift in measure four, making sure that our D sharp is low and getting all the way back up to first finger E. Is in measure 11, we wanna place our bow, one and two, and then we're subdividing to the eighth note, and three and four and one and two, and three and four and one and two, and three and four and one. One of the problems with these sorts of rhythms is that we tend to rush as musicians. So you have to be very disciplined and subdivide. So once again, here is measure 16, and I'll make sure to count the subdivisions out loud for you. 16 reti and one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and really important to do good metronome work just to make sure that you're staying as steady as you think you are. Rushing is one of those things that happens because we're not aware we're doing it. So doing good metronome work will help you keep steady for this. If you end up rushing and pushing, the whole orchestra sounds not as good as it could be. So especially as lower string instruments, we have to be very disciplined with the tempos that we are set to. Uh, All right. When we get to measure 30, this is one of those places again that Musicians tend to rush because we have all these quarter note staccatos in a row. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and with the added bonus of because it's minor, we forget that it's F sharp on the C string. Make sure we have a nice high extension F sharp on the C string. So again, good metronome work. This is rock music, it's very steady. You don't wanna rush forward. When you get to measure 32, you have an accent every four eighth notes. There's two ways to do that. Of course, one, put more emphasis where the accent is, but you can also make the other three notes less loud. And it doesn't say mezzo forte piano, mezzo forte piano. But if you play it that way, the accent becomes very clear and obvious, and we are more inclined to feel the groove of the piece as opposed to just this wall of first finger E. 
which is just too much. It's just too much because there's other stuff happening in the orchestra. So we play the first note strong and then release. First note strong and the other three eighth notes re-release. 44, same music. Stay disciplined. Use a metronome. Assume you are rushing because you probably are. Measure 48. Make sure your arm is balanced. If you're hearing that it's not clear, if you hear it's not clear, it's probably because your pinky is locked, your thumb is locked, and your elbow is at the wrong height. You want to do something with one of those variables to allow for a ringing and resonant sound. And so on, okay? Measure 55, again, you're rushing. Use a metronome. Uh, measure 59. <gasps> You're rushing because now it's pizzicato and string players, we rush pizzicato. So we want to make sure that we're counting and doing our subdivisions. One and two and three and four and 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 one. You're going to use a metronome when you practice to confirm that you're rushing and then you're going to pay attention to the metronome and you're going to adjust your playing to match that metronome. Then when you start learning your part well enough that you can hear everyone else's music, you're going to let the melody guide that rhythm. So you'll hear And if you're listening to the melody, you'll, you won't rush. You'll stay steadier because you'll hear how your part fits in with the melody. So on and so forth. Listening really helps. It helps in everything, in society as well as in music. Looking ahead to measure 72. This is hard. This is less about listening and more about just having the technique necessary. So when you have two note slurs, first of all, you're carving in small amounts with the bow. So it, that's already tricky because we have to have flexibility and fluidity in our upper arm and our shoulder. Okay, if you don't have that, that can be really challenging to make these string crossings naturally and comfortably. That said, the next thing you have to do is make sure your arm is high enough so that you're able to play the open D and open A string at the same time. You want to be able to play both strings at the same time. And then you need to learn how little it takes to go from one string to the other. For example. Where do you have to move the bow to play one string? To play both strings? And then to play the next string. The less you move, the better. We don't need to do major changes with our bow. We just need to do minor changes with our bow and that'll make it so that we're more efficient and the sound will be better. If you're flailing away with your arm, you'll tend to slow down. The sound won't be as resonant. It won't be as clear. So you want to get your arm in a place where you can play both strings and then you have to figure out the order of operations with your left hand. And it's not easy. It's just a tricky left hand puzzle. You have one, one, first finger E, first finger B. You have open A, that's no problem, but then you have fourth finger G, first finger B. So before you even try doing the string crossings, I would just play the chords. Just to make sure you can get your hand in the right place. Then you can add the string crossings. suggest doing each pair of notes four times so you can get really comfortable in that hand frame and get yourself ready for the next hand frame that way you're practicing good habits instead of just playing sort of everything kinda and practicing it that way line. and then eventually but again just the chords then repeat those chords four times each while doing the string crossing and that way you can build your hand in the correct frame good news is Almost all the music coming up is stuff you've already learned. In 78, what's that? That's right. You rush, use your metronome. 
uh, we finally get something new in measure 90, and these are all down bows. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It just becomes the bigger version. In measure 101, make a big deal about the accents and release the other eighth notes. Same with in measure 103. Again, we put emphasis on the accents on the accents. And then the last sort of really technical moment is in measure 110. Uh, so the way to count that is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, but it's very fast. So first, just play those four notes until you're comfortable releasing. As you're playing faster, you can try adding rhythms. So your hand is releasing. The problem typically with playing fast notes is that a lot of musicians will put their fingers down and grab as opposed to letting their fingers fall and then release off the string. And then you work on the next one, which has the added bonus of a string crossing. Then we have another string crossing, another string crossing. Another trick to practicing these fast 16th notes is to do slurs staccatos. That can really help to relax the right hand. And if the right hand is relaxed, then often the left hand is relaxed. Because once we flex one, we tend to flex the other. Hopefully, we don't flex anything while we're practicing. But since we know that's part of what we do as musicians, we're always learning how to release the instrument as opposed to pressing down an M, it can be a trick to do slurs staccato to relax one hand so that the other hand can relax as well. That's it. That's Wizards in Winter. Work your way slowly, use a metronome, and then you can find the play along track as well on YouTube if you'd like to experience playing the entire thing at a variety of tempos. Good luck, happy practicing, thanks for stopping by. And remember, if you practice every day, by the end of the year, you'll be taller. Thank you.